My name is Gianni Russo, a.k.a. Carlo, the infamous son-in-law from The Godfather. I'm now known as the Hollywood Godfather, and this is my story. Before all of the wins in my portfolio, I was a little boy diagnosed with polio, experimenting with cures. I tried every one, felt everything in my right, but my left was numb. Walking with a limp, like will I ever run? Once again, or is this it? Am I forever done? Living in the hospital was never fun. Some people were cool, but not everyone. You never know who you're lying in a room with. So I broke a broomstick in half and let it groove with the concrete in the bathroom floor. It had a new tip, stashed it behind the toilet in case I ever had to use it. Cause one day Dolores had a chat with me. Said she got word someone was coming after me. My heart started beating rapidly. I looked in front of me and back of me. Who thinks they're whacking me? Some weeks passed, no one's made. Speak softly loud and hold me warm against your heart. I hear your words, the tender trembling. Welcome, everybody, and here we are again Hollywood Godfather Podcast with my co-writer, Pat Picciarelli. Good evening, everybody. Our young genius, Megan Horan. Thank you very much. And How we have you? a very special show tonight, thank God. In fact, Pat, why don't you introduce our special guest? This is interesting. Okay, uh, this is uh, Brandon. I lost his last name. Brandon Williams. Williams. Brandon Williams. How can I forget that? Uh, he will be playing uh, Gianni in an, an upcoming film and uh this is in fact this is the first time i understand that you and gianni have actually come face to face correct yes yes okay uh this is a very that's why difficult... you wanted to call you russo <laughs> yeah. this is a very difficult uh, uh job you have here to portray gianni i mean he's been around a long time bon vivant man about town philanthropist businessman consummate actor so i have prepared some pointers if you will to help you along this road now i don't know gianni Look, can i interrupt interru- can i interrupt you he's all of those things too and probably has more money than me so i think you're okay. prepared wrong <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> let's no, get into it to, uh, but pat we only have 20 minutes he's we we're late and he's got to get to a meeting 45 seconds These are the top 10 ways to become Gianni Russo. Okay, you really have to put your heart into this. Number 10, stop wearing undershirt socks and suits worth less than Mm $10,000. Number nine, you can find your friends, the guy's name Frank, Frankie, and Frankie Boy. (laughs) Number eight, learn how to cook really well. Invite 10 total strangers to dinner at your place. And charge them five thousand dollars each for the opportunity. <laughs> Donate the money to charity. By the way, Gianni's favorite charity uh, is the H H O F. That's homeless hookers of Fresno. <laughs> Number seven, have lots of kids. One of them has to be conceived in an elevator. <laughs> Number six, only drink on days ending in Y. <laughs> Number five. Marry 11 times, no need to know the names of the women. (laughs) Number four, go to Rome to advise the Pope. Number three, learn how to pronounce Haran. Number two, (laughs) resign as president of the James Conn fan club. (laughs) And the, the number one way to become Gianni Russo, if you're appearing on a podcast pants are optional is that it that's it <laughs> now, okay now megan give him a can, can we give brandon a formal inter- introduction because he don't even know the film he's doing it's called the that, that offer was, <laughs> yes i can i can do that for please us. that that was brilliant thoroughly Thank you. so yes so we have brandon williams with us he is playing gianni russo as we have mentioned in an upcoming Paramount Plus limited series on the making of The Godfather called The Offer. So Brandon, will you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and how you got this role as Gianni? Okay, so uh, 
similar story as Gianni, except uh, put it in Los Angeles. I basically grew up on the streets. My father wanted to be an actor. And my father was always, he was basically a street guy. So ever since I was a kid, I had so many different odd jobs. I've always been a hard worker. And uh, my father, as a kid, uh, used to sell sheepskins and cowhides on the corner. So if I wanted a skateboard, if I wanted a jacket, since I was five years old, I used to work the corners. And I learned how to size people up on the corner since I was a kid. And I got to grow up in LA on the streets and uh, skateboarding, surfing, having fun. And it was like basically the California story of Gianni Russo, except I haven't killed anybody yet, <laughs> yet. Uh, but my favorite movies growing up was The Godfather, Goodfellas, uh, you know, all the Scorsese films, Casino. And everybody always asked me if I was Italian or if I was from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I never was. And I meet people all the time and like, dude, you have an East Coast mentality. Now, my wife is Italian. Uh, my wife is from Staten Island. Oh, my God. Uh, my, my son's name is Gianni. Go figure. Oh, Are you oh, kidding? Now, you didn't tell me that. I love it. Thank yes, you. I did tell you that. I said, guess my son's name. Oh, I wow. did tell you that, Gianni. And you said, and you and you nailed it. You go, Gianni. And I go, of course. So That's my wild. son's name is Gianni Leon Williams. Um, and uh, I guess I always wanted to be Italian. Now, I'm Irish, Welsh, German, and Russian Jewish. But I've always slicked back my hair since I was a kid. I always loved to work hard. I wear nice suits. This is Tom Ford right here. So when we're talking about $10,000 suits, I always love nice cars. And I got to watch Gianni Russo of who he was on Vlad TV a few years ago. And I heard the story. And then I started watching all of his interviews for fun because I thought they were so entertaining. I'm like, who is this guy? Brando, Marilyn Monroe, the Godfather, you know, working for the mob, Vegas. And I was like, holy shit. So all of a sudden, I used to, for a small window, I, I was an actor for about seven years. I made a living at it. And I did a bunch of teen films and I was on TV shows. And then I got into real estate. I was like, I need to make some real money. Just at the time, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be the next Brad Pitt or Leo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. So I got into real estate and I ended up flourishing. I now develop, I, you know, I've sold some of the biggest properties in Los Angeles. I own my own firm. I have several people that work for me. And, uh, and, and, and but I always dabbled. I've been on entourage because I sold the entourage executive producers homes and I've worked with so many people and this cast director, John Paps there who knew me was like, I'm casting this character and it's coming to mind that I think you should play this guy. Could you do it? He sends me an email and I barely ever check my emails. I have people that do that for me. I hate emails. I'm still old school. I like to talk and text. And I said, no problem. Easy. And then they sent me the sides. I was like, shit, now I got to really do this. And now you don't audition. You have to go put yourself on tape, kind of like Gianni Russo did for The Godfather when he delivered it to Al Ruddy. I sent it in, and with the day, they said, you got the part. And they were trying to cast the part for several months because they couldn't find okay, the guy that could nail dressing, looking good, and having that extra sophistication and style and swag like our man, The Hollywood Godfather. Well, you got more than I have going on. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm impressed. That's fabulous. Thank you. What a compliment that you yeah. that you're playing me. We're gonna have some fun with this when this comes out, though. That I yeah. guarantee you. I'm, I'm curious to see how the. Well, I'll just tell you it's it's three episodes. It's really about Al Ruddy. No kidding. The whole the, the, thing is about our yeah, life. It's, yeah, it's about the producer, the making on, and everything that had to go on with making The Godfather with the mob, with the, uh, you know, all the producers and trying to get the actors and all the characters. So it's really about him. I'm only in three episodes. I have about six scenes, but okay. the really fun scenes, it's one of them is the infamous uh, James Conn scene. And the other is when I first get to, uh, I go on the Paramount uh, lot and I meet Al Ruddy and I give him the tape 
and uh, how Al Ruddy hires me. And uh, it, it, listen, it's a fun part. It's not huge, but like they say, there's no huge parts in uh, in, in Hollywood. But the thing, what, what, what I know about what's going on, because I got enough people on that set telling me, Al Ruddy basically took over the whole project. Forget about Bobby Evans, all his... Nobody nobody did anything else but Al Ruddy in this movie. I love it. That's so funny. I mean, it's, he's going to well, get... Okay. I'm, glad, I'm sorry. No, no, go, no, keep going with what you're saying. No, he's going to get a lot of heat from this because, you know, there's still people around. Gray Fredericks and Stanley Jack. I mean, there was a lot of people involved in this. Yeah. But now it's the Al Ruddy show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it, you know, Miles Teller, who's a very talented actor, is playing Al Ruddy. Is, uh, he's a great actor. He's in the new Top Gun. He was also in a really big movie, Whiplash, who's a young, he's like a 35-year-old, really talented actor is playing him, so it's going to be great. Uh, who else is, uh, we have Justin Chambers, who was on, uh, who was on that show. Um, uh, what was the show called? Uh, the uh, procedural show, uh, Grey's Anatomy, who's playing Marlon Brando. And I swear to God, he looks so good. He looks like Marlon Brando and he's doing an incredible job. Gianni Rabisi's in it. So it's a great cast. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and it's it's really fun to, you know, all the old outfits in the 1970s. If only I could snap my, I was born in the wrong era. I mean, I, I, I built a, a mid-century house right by where Gianni Russo and Marlon Brando used to live, right in the Truesdale. I have a mid-century cool house, and it's all 70s style. So I was in the wrong era, so this was easy for me. It wasn't really acting. That's mm -hmm. wild. That's great, man. That's We're going to have a lot of fun when you leave the show now. <laughs> you gave us a lot to talk about to fill in. <laughs> Well, I always just love all your stories. And, you know, I was first introduced to you with the story with the, uh, when you were uh, uh, fighting um, uh, a polio and you had to uh, uh, kill the guy that was inside the hospital. Oh, yeah. And then I just saw all your Vegas stories and just all the people and then getting into the Godfather. I mean, God, I mean, what a, and then everything after that. And I watched all your interviews. Uh, right after The Godfather, when you started producing. And funny enough, I studied Muay Thai. My Muay Thai coach was in your uh, movie, uh, Pacific Coast Highway, PCH. Oh, wow. Yeah, Ernie Reyes Jr. Do you remember him? Not really, teenage, no. no. He was a teenage uh, mutant ninja turtle, but he remembers you, yeah. Yeah, that, that was, I wrote, I wrote and produced that. I know. It was a great cast, too. In fact, yeah, uh, now, now that you're reminding me, uh, Denise Richards still owes me another film. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. I didn't know you knew yeah. that that much about me. Yeah, I, well, then I, I also, I listened. I, I'm not a big fan of reading, so I listened to the whole Hollywood Godfather, your whole story. I watched tons of interviews on you. And, and you know, one of my favorite stories was is when you got the movie, and uh, you showed up to the read through, the cold read, and you were just dressed all fly, pulled up in like a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. Yeah. And you're like, what the? And you met all the actors and you were like, God, they look like bums. They look like gardeners. And then you meet Marlon Brando and on the call sheet it says, it says, don't look him in the eyes. And then Marlon Brando's like, what the fuck? This guy's not an actor and he's going to play me? Are you fucking kidding me? And then he tells Coppola, this is the guy that's going to. Uh, date my daughter and this is the guy that's going to have my son killed and you basically grab Marlon Brando by the neck and said come to the side here and go dude if you fuck this up for me I already told the boys and the, and if I don't get this part I'm going to basically cut out your neck or, or cut out your heart Yeah, I, said, he I, I, I was going to suck on his heart I told him <laughs> <laughs> and he thought I was acting <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's then, so you had a lot of stuff to work from. <laughs> Pity you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, I, I listen, I'm never gonna be able to play you, but you know, I think what I picked up from you is that you love life, you love to have a great time, you love to go on journeys, and you laugh a lot and you have fun. 
That's all and, I you know, do. So, and so, and so that's what I really took away from it. You know, I didn't have that much time to prepare. It was literally like within a week or two, they were like, okay, now you're going on set because they couldn't find the guy. And, uh, you know, I, I crammed and, but I already knew about you. So that was the good thing. And I went back to the Godfather, but it's not the, it's the make, it's the behind the scenes right. of the making of the Godfather. Right. Right. So it was, you know, so I had a great time and it's an honor playing you and, and you have well, such my, my privilege to have you do it because at least you, at least you know something about me and, uh, all I'm hearing about is, you know, that, as I said earlier, it's mostly about Al Ruddy and how he created this whole thing. But uh, how did the fight scene go? So they actually picked it up. They picked it up after the fight scene. So it shows, but it's actually watching. So you hear the whole fight scene and you hear them talking about, and you're watching Al Ruddy and all the producers in Coppola talking about it. And then me afterwards getting kind of wheeled away into the ambulance. And then it takes <laughs> over from there. And it takes over with uh, Betty and I now. I don't know how much I'm allowed to reveal. I'm sure I signed Oh, no, don't, don't, don't give up anything. Oh, whatever. But I, but it, it's, so it's the making up. Because I had, you know, when I was going on, to, when I got the film, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get to do the whole fight scene. Well, of course, Hollywood puts their spin on it and comes up with creative ways. And I'm sure budget, too, has something to do with it. But uh, it was just, listen, man, it was it was so fun to do. And, and, you know, being able to play you, listen, I'm a character and you're a character. And we have so many things in common. I mean, you got married at the Beverly Hills Hotel. The Beverly Hills Hotel is right by my house. I eat there all the time. And it's a very special place to me. You lived right up on Mulholland. I love Mulholland. Mulholland Drive is one of my oh, favorite yeah, places. Oh, yeah, my God. Well, so you're right drive, there. I, I was know, in, I, I was in the polo lounge every day. That's when Waleed, yeah. Waleed was the maitre d. He loved me, man. Forget it. Uh, well, and then I also drive by Marlon Brando's property where I know you got to spend right. a lot of time. Yeah. So I know you have a big, and you lived right on Elm Drive. And, uh, you know, I know you have, a. there's a big piece of you when you came out here. So I could relate and I feel you and I feel your spirit. Yeah, I was right on the corner of Elm and Sunset. That's yeah, a great house. Well, well, I'm on the corner of Hillcrest and Sunset, about four blocks away from you. I know right where you are. My God, forget about it. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. D Dean Martin lived right up the hill from you. Yeah, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra. Yeah. I mean, all the Elvis lived on my street. So you I made a lot of money. <laughs> Listen, I've been blessed. You know, I, I came from nothing and I worked my ass off and, uh, and uh, I made some right decisions. And, you know, listen, man, I'm looking at my sign right here in front of me. You can't see it, but I have a neon sign. This is my office on Sunset Strip. I'm right on Sunset in San Vicente, Caddy Corner from the Whiskey A Go Go. And I'm looking at the sign that says real estate is king. You know, That's so I right. got lucky to... Uh, you know, so I basically legitimized it, but I always thought of myself as a wise guy, but doing real estate pops. And I didn't have to spend time in prison. <laughs> Nor did I, when thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Megan and Pat, you have any questions to ask the, the new Gianni Russo? <laughs> well, I did my stand-up act, man. I'm blown. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. So, Brennan, the offer, you said um, before we started recording that it's wrapping soon. Um, yeah. Do you know when it's supposed to be out? I don't. They haven't told me yet. Okay. Well, I, I think I know. Because, I see, mo they don't realize I'm still partners with Paramount Viacom. So, we're, we're doing a lot of things surrounding with the, you know, I'm, I'm involved with the Corleone Fine Foods and the liquor and all that. And uh, they're saying it's going to be close to the 50th anniversary. On, yes, it's on for the Paramount Plus. Yes, that's why they're doing it for the yeah. 50th anniversary. Yeah. And Yellowstone is on Paramount Plus, which Yellowstone's a massive hit, right. and they plan on this to be a big hit. Yep. So what? Maybe they'll bring you back. Hey, you never. Where, where know. could they go with it? They have to keep doing the Godfathers. What could yeah, where, what I could mean, the storyline be? I would, I would, I would absolutely. I could play you for the rest of my life. You know, I don't. <laughs> I guess if you're going to have to play somebody, it's not bad to play you, right? No, hey, and please. I, I would love it. We have something similar in common. You've had 11, 
you've had 11 uh, different wives. Well, uh, 10 wives, 11 kids. 10 wives, yeah. Well, my wife is Italian. She's full-blooded Sicilian Italian. So it's like, it's like I'm dating 10 wives. No, but you know, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, I understand what you mean, man. You got to watch that personality. They, they turn on a dime, man. <laughs> oh, my God. And you said she's from Staten Island? Yeah. How did you meet her out there? So she was in mortgage business, and then she got into real estate, and she was this gorgeous Italian woman, and I was like, Jesus Christ, who's this girl? And I had my eye on her and then we became friends and then we became partners. And then uh, we became lovers and marriage and kids. And how many children have, do you have? We have, I have two kids, Gianni and Viviana. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. And uh, you know, we love the Italian culture. We love Italian food. We've gone to Italy several times and uh you know, we try to, at least I got to have half Italian kids. That's great. That's perfect, man. That's why I have, I have, I'm funny because you have Italian kids. I have two Jewish sons. <laughs> Amazing. I'm raising well, two of my that, sons Jewish. Nice. Yeah, it's all good. That's all good. God, <laughs> God bless, man. But I, I, I really want to meet you. I have a couple of ideas that, but you, you don't need anything. We're going to have some fun with it later on down the road. I know that. Because I, I could see your energy and you like having fun like I do. And it's just going to be a goof. I mean, but um, let's see where it goes. I mean, I think it's it's amazing and really appreciate. Megan, what do you think? I mean, Megan now just became, a, 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 she's an assistant director. No, that's given me a bigger title than deserved. I started out as a production assistant on The Blacklist. Just recently. She just so started this week. Getting my own uh, way into. Incredible. Television. That's I, that's supposed to be a great show. I haven't, I, I've heard that. I've it's heard been on eight time. years, isn't it? it? Yeah, I think they're on their ninth season right now. I've never actually watched it, but um, it's a big production and it's, it's great. It's been great so far. But yeah. No, that's a great accolade. No, she's going to go to the moon. Pat and I noticed it. <laughs> three years ago when we first met and brought her on with us. So, you know, she's, she's the beauty amongst the two beasts. <laughs> now, now, Pat, was, was it my assistant that called you and got Gianni's number? Because I was trying to get a hold of Gianni. Is, is it, was it, and was he the one, my uh, assistant Preston, that got a hold of you and gave me uh, Gianni's number? Uh, your assistant must have gone through Megan, no? No, he got through, I thought he talked to... Somebody Maybe Jeffrey Dash. Maybe and Jeffrey Dash, to... my office oh, no, in no, LA. No, 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 uh, uh, Brandon, you're, you're right. Yeah, uh, your assistant, this was quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, called and I, and I yeah, right. And I uh, contacted Gianni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, tried right. to get, I tried to call Gianni. I was looking, I have all these websites to get people's phone numbers. And I called him a couple of times and he hung straight up on me. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then, then you got a hold of him, and then he called me. What's your assistant's I, name, Brandon? What? Preston. Your, Preston. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. Him several times. And yeah. so, and then I wasn't like at first. Johnny was like, "Who the fuck is calling me? You're what?" And I didn't know if he believed it or not. And then he was like, "Send me the call sheet." So I was like, "Okay." I sent him the call sheet of of my name and playing Gianni Russo, and yeah, I just had to talk to him, and people couldn't believe that I actually got a hold of him and I was talking. to him. You'd no, be surprised. Tank, I'm glad you did. The only reason I wanted the call sheet because I knew the project was going on, and I yeah. didn't want to be talking to someone that's doing a story against it because I'm in business with Viacom 50 years already, and I don't yeah. need any problems, especially now we're expanding in about 17 countries. <laughs> but, uh, it's always about business. <laughs> But I'm I'm flattered that you're doing it, and obviously you got a great personality, and you're gonna. I well, you don't even want to go back into the business, do you? Now that you got your feet wet again. Listen, I like to have fun. Obviously, you know, I, I love this was fun, and I had a great time. I had a great time doing it, and I got to work with great people. So if it's fun and it makes sense, but uh, you know, I don't want to make I don't want to make this be my sole living. I have a really great business. I like what I do. I can make my own schedule and 
Well, I mean, I, listen, if somebody said, you got to do this for that, I could do it. And it would, you know, and it's, but this was, how can I say no to this? The making of the Godfather, one of the greatest films ever made playing the Hollywood Godfather legend, Gianni Russo. It's like, duh. Yeah, but you know, you know like, where my, my head is going and, uh, and, and Megan, obviously, and Pat know what's going on. We, we've been financed twice to do the book into a movie. Twice. Yeah. But then the Screen Actors Guild laid us all these new ramifications, and I've just pulled the plug. <laughs> no, it's so true, true. I mean, uh, David Gersh's office set it up. It was a big deal with uh, Colin Wilson as a line producer, um, Nick Vallelonga, who won the Oscar of a Green Book, wrote the screenplay. So now I have one of Putin's close friends want us to do it. And we're, we're very much may offer you the part to play me from 35 going on. Could be a lot of fun. Well, I would love to do it. It'd be an honor. No, it'd be, it'd be fun to do. Why not? I mean, it would be the biggest goof on Al Ruddy. <laughs> I love Al. I, how far back I go with Al Ruddy? He used to sleep on our pool table because he was so broke. And then when we came to New York, even scouting, he was living with his mother's apartment on 57th Street. They were just, get, you know, he was just getting out of the bag with that. That's a big project he had for his first yeah. movie. It was huge. Massive. That's great, man. It's, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and I'm so happy to finally be able to talk to you at length and see you. And I'm flattered that they got you to play me, man. But we, well, I'm, all, I'm always available anytime you want me to come on the podcast after the show. I'm here for you guys. And when I come to New York, I want to see you. Well, when you come to LA, hey, open arms. No, you got to come to my house. It, uh, you'll find it interesting. I, I walked in here when I was 13. I know you told me that. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Incredible. But uh, so, what, are you planning to come to New York at all soon? I should come. We were supposed to actually come in a month, and then like, you know, the whole my wife with COVID and this. Oh and yeah, that, no, no. This, so. No, whatever. Gotta watch it. Come, I listen, I love New York City. Every time I go to New York City, I get depressed because I wish I would have lived there. It's the greatest city in the world. Yeah. So Definitely. much history, so many amazing, you know, architecture, characters. I mean, all Megan the Megan just moved there. here. Megan moved here. Pat moved away. In fact, they, they switched states. <laughs> it's true, actually. I heard it's on fire right now. I heard everybody's just... It, the city's booming right now. I do four or five miles a day, even today at 35 degrees. Fifth Avenue, you would think it was 1965. Every store, every street's jammed. The hotels are jammed. I just hope, yeah. it, you know, COVID and all that doesn't blow it up again. But it's back. It's really back. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. Uh, well, guys, I have a meeting that I have to go to. But thank you so much. It's a pleasure, and Johnny, man, so good to see you face to face. No, please, thank you, and and, and again, uh, we have to do it again. And let's and do it. Maybe, I'm available once anytime. we know what's going on, we'll have some more fun with it. Okay, let's do it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for making this right, happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Have care, a great guys. holiday. Have a great Bye-bye. holiday. Take please. care. Bye. Bye. Great kid, though, huh? Yeah, he was great. Yeah, he was good. Very charismatic. So why don't we do, uh, we'll take a fast commercial, we'll go to the mailbag, and then, Pat, you have anything to talk about expiring that we should share right now? Well, I uh, I would hope I'm not expiring. Other than that... Uh, I didn't say no. expiring. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Aspiring. Oh, aspiring. Okay. I don't know, perhaps I can think of something uh, during the, the commercial break. All right. Yeah, I thought of something. Yeah. Good. All right, please. We'll be right back. We know where you live. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, Patrick Picciarelli here. Before we get to our listeners' emails, a quick word about the new fiction book series I've launched. Private investigator Ray Yale tackles his first two cases in Bloodshot Eyes and The Pop Line. Both books are in paperback and are available on Amazon.com. I've been a PI for 30 years, and these books are based on my cases. Enjoy. All right, we're back. Let's make some money with the mailbag. Mailbag. The mailbag. Do we have any recent updates we want to 
just to let oh, on. Oh yeah, I want I, I want to I want to say something. I I forgot to say it. I'll be at Steel City Con in Pittsburgh on the yeah. Are you believe that? <laughs> the tenth. I love that. Yeah, you got to meet up. Tenth, eleven, and twelfth. I'll be there, and uh, I'm I'm one of the featured past tent movie stars meeting and greeting and taking pictures. In fact, I, I, I'm i there on my birthday, so anybody wants to come by and say, happy 79th birthday, I can't believe it. But I'll be there. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse, so I'm there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be down there, half hour drive. Are you kidding me? Oh, come great. On. How many times were you here? Of course, I'm a half hour away. I, how, I, I thought you were at least three hours from everywhere. That's great. <laughs> oh, not Everywhere from... except Pittsburgh. All right. So now we're in the mailbag. Okay. Let's get into it. So first we have from Anthony. Anthony says, Gianni, is there any information you could share on the Frank Sinatra Jr. kidnapping in 1963? Thank you. Yeah, he set it up. That's it. That's all I could say. And the story. <laughs> that, I mean, that, what, a, that was, what an embarrassment for his father. Uh, such a ridiculous thing. Moving on with that, I don't want to go near that. Okay. Next is from Antonio. Antonio says, hello, all great podcasts. Keep up the great work. Gianni, who would you say was the better entertainer, Dean Martin or Frank Sinatra? You know, That's Dean awesome. has always been my favorite because he was so back, you know, laid back and whatever. But, you know, Sinatra was more, I mean, he was a genius, obviously, in but yeah, there are two different personalities. I mean, when, when even just on stage, when you mentioned Sammy Davis, there was three great talents, all, you know, who they were is what, what, they, what they delivered. And that's why I think the Rat Pack worked. I mean, Joey Bishop, I still don't know what he did. And Peter Lawson, he was a, a good waiter, and that's what he <laughs> did on stage, brought drinks to people. But, uh, no, that, I mean, that, that's a great... I, I think we have to add Sammy because the talents are so diverse and, and so different from each other. But Dean was my favorite to be with and hang out with. Frank, as Pat and I found out while we were doing our research, I mean, this guy was like whew, yeah. such bipolar yeah. and such, I mean, schizo. You know, I was watching a clip on, uh, on uh, YouTube today, uh, Dean Martin dancing with the four step brothers. You recall them, Gianni? Oh yeah, my God, yeah. I tell you, Dean was a damn good dancer. Oh yeah. Well that's know. when the studios groomed you all. You know yeah. you had, had dance everything. lessons, you had everything. He was good. Yeah. yeah. That, that's great. They I mean, Dean's a major man. And and, and I miss him. Re I really do miss him because every time I put my shoes on it reminds me of him. He gave me my first pair of these slippers. <laughs> I was like 17. All right. The next one is from Peter. Peter says, have you folks seen The Many Saints of Newark? What's your take? Oh, my God. Can, we st can I start that out? The worst junk I ever saw in my life. And because Galdafini's son is his son, he can't act himself out of a paper bag. And they're saying they're going to do another one. The ratings were so bad. Pat, I think you saw it, didn't you, too? Tell us how you really feel, Johnny. Oh, I tell you. No, I tell you, I, I think it was different. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, the people who are, are familiar with The Sopranos, as most people are, the voiceovers there was uh, the uh, Maldesanti character at, at he went to Hollywood during The Sopranos to write a screenplay. That was the screenplay that we saw in All the Saints of Newark. You understand what I'm saying? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, James Gandolfini's uh, cousin. He dies in, in, in a car crash at the end. Malta Santi is the last name. I never watched the show, so you're asking. Oh, you never watched The Sopranos? I didn't. Anyway, ha never wanted to watch it. He was a, he was a young, wise guy, and uh, he thought he was a, sc a screenwriter. Uh, two of the episodes, or maybe three, it was a three-story arc. He, he goes out to California to uh, connect with the uh, uh, with the Hollywood crowd, and he wrote a screenplay, and he gives the screenplay to somebody, and actually it is written well, and it's forgotten. The uh, Many Saints of Newark is supposed to be that screenplay. 
And the voiceover who narrates the movie is the Malta Santi character from The Sopranos. The same actor, too. So that's the, the that's how the story emanated. But as far as I thought, uh, James Gandolfini son wasn't bad as an actor. I think he was terrible. But you ought to know you're you're, you're an actor. I'm not. No, I mean I'm talking about the reviews, not my my opinion. I didn't watch it. All oh, I did, heard huh? were the reviews and the people who did watch it couldn't watch it. It it didn't do well. Uh, no way. Oh, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting. I mean, it was great, but the, you know, any fan of The Sopranos uh, was going to watch it no matter how bad it was. Yeah, and that's what and it I, was. I love The Sopranos. I watched it, but I didn't rewatch it. Like, I rewatched episodes of The Sopranos for the last eight years. Now, I saw it once, that was enough. Apparently, that, I mean, I'm looking up the more public ratings. They're not so terrible. No? no. Rotten Tomatoes is 71%. Um, that's pretty high for Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I'm is six it point is. out of ten. Not terrible, but maybe you said maybe you had seen some more personal anecdotes about it that weren't so. Well, I'm so just I, 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 what they what? thought they were going to do with it, with the you know, the, the anticipation. What they that they, they thought it was going to be a blockbuster. Hmm. They had a recut. Oh. They cut it like three different times. Yeah, the, get, the the character's name was Christopher Maltesanti. He was James Gandolfini's nephew in the in the series uh the uh, the uh, tony soprano character but it was all it was all his story the the main focus of attention for the the, the many saints yeah but movie. david chase created all those characters so david wrote it yeah okay but it was based on the old screenplay right from uh from chris maltesanti but the focus wasn't necessarily on james gandolfini's son it was on chris maltesanti's father he was the antagonist. Of that so movie. why did they make that kid the star? Well, he wasn't necessarily a star. He was he was uh, Tony Soprano's son. No, but they I mean, sold it that way. In it. They he sold it. I mean, all I heard was that this kid, this kid, this kid. That, that's that's too much problem. time on it now. Anyway, it's terrible. Let's yeah, move he, on. Yeah, he never acted before. I mean, you know, it's, no. it was okay. Did you see it, Megan? I didn't. No. Huh? Well, no. It's off the it's off the air now. It was on it was on. Uh, HBO Max for 30 days and then it's gone. Mm. So it's no yeah, it seems, seems to be very mixed reviews from what I'm reading. Yeah. About yeah. Personal things that I can see on Google, very mixed. Okay. Next. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Next is from Mark. Mark says, Have you guys appeared on other podcasts? You would make great guests as a team or separately. Well, I've, the done only a lot of, I've, I've done a lot of done, podcasts. The three of us was. Um, Real talk with the Hollywood kid with Mike Distasio. Three of us did that together. Other than that, no. Yeah, I've, I've been on a few. In fact, I was on one Friday night, uh, local uh, podcast. I was on. Uh, in fact, I've been on that one, this particular one, twenty times already. Oh wow! Uh, it's, What's the name of it? Uh, talk about basically everything. I, I forget what, what the topic was this week, but uh, basically, you know, the mob, the movies, you know, stuff that I know, police work, books. What's the name I'm, of it? A, I, I, you know, I forgot. Just in case of all people want to tune in. <laughs> Michael Dell. Uh, I believe it's the Michael Dell show. Oh. Uh, but there could be a subtitle under that. He does three hours. And I always come on the second hour. I don't he know does three hour. hours a night? No, three hours a week. A week. One show, three hours, yeah. The first hour, I have no idea what it is, or the third hour. I always come on the second hour. I, they, they they even gave me a theme song I've been on so much. There you go. What's yeah. your theme song? Let me hear this one. The uh, the uh, theme to Peter Gunn by Henry Mancini. Oh, there you go. It's apropos. That's, that's my, yeah. It's very apropos, Mr. Gunn. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do any podcast, particularly when we're trying to sell something. You know, if we have a book or, or you know, whatever. Uh, oh, yeah, it's go always good. Yeah. It's always good. That's that's basically why I go on something. I have something to sell. Good stuff. All right. Next is from William. William says, Johnny and Patrick, have either of you heard of a someone named John Silvestri? He owned some health clubs in Manhattan and Queens. I think they were called Shouten Health Clubs. In oh, boy. The Rumor was he was in OC. Organized crime. Yeah. Let, let me tell you something about Silvestri. I, I'm surprised. Who, who, who sent that? William did. Oh, uh, William. Uh, I just gotten out of just gotten out of Vietnam, and I was crossing. I had this thing. There was something wrong with me, you know. You know, I mean, I, I spent too much time in Asia, but 
I used to like to walk everywhere. I would walk from Jackson Heights, Queens, John, you can appreciate this, to Manhattan and back most every day. And that's a freaking hike. Yeah. And one day, I'm do you know by, you know in miles what it is? About eight miles one way. Uh, anyway, his, his name wasn't John Sylvester; it was Joe Sylvester, I believe. But oh. anyway, uh, I'm crossing Lexington Avenue, and I had just gotten back. I weighed 115 pounds, and I had the deepest mahogany tan you would ever see because I was in the sun for a, a year. And a guy taps me on the shoulder. He introduces himself as Joe Sylvester. He owned the Shelton Health Club, and he said. You look like you need to work out, he tells me. I mean, I was in bad shape. I had every disease, uh, dysentery. I was all screwed up. But he gave me, uh, he had two of them. He had one in Manhattan, one in Queens. He gave me free passes to both of them. And I, I, I stayed a, uh, a free member of that club for like five years. Wow. wow. Yeah, really nice guy. Uh, yeah, I heard he was connected too. How how nice was he, <laughs> Pat? <laughs> just a very nice guy. You know, he. I, I told I'm him teasing I, I you. Got, I, him, I just got out of Vietnam. He had some family member that was there. And he said, you know, he was a big fan of the military, yada, yada. And I owned both Shelton clubs. One was in Forest Hills and one was right on Lexington Avenue. And he said, you got a free membership for as long as you want it. And truthfully, it's the last time I ever saw the guy. But I had heard that he was connected some way or another. I don't. But have you heard of him? I never heard of him. I, I oh, thought so when right. she went on, when she was talking about that, that we were going to go to those bath houses back then that were having no this was a this was a gym a gym i didn't know a gym in in the, in the shelton hotel on lexington avenue i don't know if it's still open and he named it after the hotel and he had the he had the branch of forest hills hmm. but uh yeah i've been going to there for years what a nice guy and uh, i don't think he I, I think it was if he was involved with the mob i think that was just the cover i've never seen him in the club and i was there like four days a week working out he was never there so I'm assuming it was it was some kind of a money laundering operation for him, if that's what he was involved in. He's he's got to be long gone now. I mean, I was barely twenty when I when I met the guy. He was in his fifties, so he's wow. long gone. Oh yeah, he's yeah. 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 Good question, Joe Sylvester. Interesting stuff. Well, that's all we have time for tonight, gentlemen. Well, great. Okay. Well, it's time to say good night. Obviously, Pat was in a hurry, so he left already. <laughs> so I'm saying good night for Pat. Myself, Megan, my love, congratulations on your new position, and Thanks. we'll be back next week. Tell your friends, write reviews. We need more people. God bless. If you're feeling sad and lonely, there's a service I could render. I'm the one who loves you only. I could be so warm, so tender. Call me. Don't be afraid, you can call me. Maybe it's late, but just call me. Tell me and I'll be around. Thank you for tuning in to the Hollywood Godfather podcast. You can contact Gianni Russo, Patrick Picciarelli, or myself, Megan Horan, with your questions and comments through the contact section of our website, hollywoodgodfatherpodcast.com, which is where you can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter. You can also call and leave us a message at 646-776-3038. Remember to follow us on Instagram at Hollywood Godfather and on Facebook, as well as leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We'd like to know what you like about what we're doing, what you'd like to hear in the future, and anything else you might suggest to improve our podcast. Most importantly, hit the subscribe button. We'll be back next week with stories of the mob and Hollywood, as well as answers to your messages. Good night. Call me, tell me, and I'll be around. I'll be around. Give me a call. When I was seventeen, it was a very good year. It was a very good year for small town girls. And soft summer nights 
We'd hide from the light on the village green when I was seventeen. More than this, I didn't mind.